Assalamualaikum. This is Dr. Hasna back with another video on the abdomen series. Today, another organ awaits you. It is none other than the spleen. But before that, guys, all of you that do not know me, I am an anatomy teacher from Pakistan, and I try my best to make anatomy as simple as possible with mnemonics and tricks that get you there. So, guys, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Turn your post notifications on. I have some exciting content coming up for you. But before that, let's get spleen out of the way. Today we're discussing this organ right here and this organ is at left side of the abdomen. This is known as the spleen. It's a wedge-shaped organ and today we're going to be discussing about the anatomy of the spleen in 3D. So what happens is your spleen is this wedge-shaped organ that is kept directed laterally. So what you're going to do is place your hand at the back of your ribs, right on the anterolateral side of your thorax, uh, directed downwards and laterally. Interestingly, the spleen lies in the left hypochondrium it is lying in the left hypochondrium right beneath your costal margin the pancreas is coming right here spleen is going to be connecting with one side with the kidney which is going to be lying in the posterior abdominal wall and one side with the stomach which is going to be lying a little anteriorly between the stomach and the spleen there will be the lesser sac i hope you can remember the spleen has two ends the posterior end and an anterior end three borders which is the superior border an inferior border and an intermediate border right at the center side this is its left side this is the right side so if you're seeing it inside or from the medial side you will see this is how the spleen will be this is that inferior border this is that superior border and between this right here intermediate border in only 3d shape you can see that this border is actually protruding this is that intermediate border the superior border is actually notched and why is it notched because uh, in the embryologic life, the development of the spleen was from multiple origins. So different, different places, the spleen was formed and then it fused to form a single spleen. However, this went wrong and there was failure to fuse these splenic origins. It can form what we call the accessory spleen is a clinical related to spleens. All right. And now we have two surfaces, one on this left side. This is known as the diaphragmatic surface because it is going to come in relation to the diaphragm. And this is the visceral surface, which will be in relation to the viscera. Let's talk about the visceral surface and the visceral surface right here. I told you there's an intermediate border lying between the superior border and intermediate border. Right at this lower part, you will see the hilum of the spleen. So you can see it right here. This is the superior border and this is that intermediate border. This right here is the hilum of the spleen. I don't need to be overwhelmed by this model because slowly, slowly, I will be putting two and two together and then you'll understand exactly what this model is about of the angles of the spleen where the superior border is meeting the anterior angle this angle is known as the antero basal angle of the spleen. here comes the superior border it meets with the anterior end of the spleen this is the antero basal angle the importance of this angle is that spleen in a normal individual is not palpable you cannot palpate it on examination However, you can only palpate spleen if it has enlarged, which is known as splenomegaly. Now, if the splenomegaly that is occurring is twice of its original size, only then you can palpate the spleen because it's actually hidden under the costal margin, all right, under the ribs. So spleen is hidden. Therefore, it has to enlarge to an extent that we are able to palpate it when it goes below the costal margin. First thing you palpate is this anterobasal angle. Therefore, this is known as the clinical angle of the spleen. Now that you're almost becoming a master in learning the spleen, you're just one step away from doing a PhD in it. So guys, today we're going to divide the spleen into the following topics and I want you to memorize it accordingly so that it's organized and stays in your mind because that is what's going to show up in your exam. So it goes like relations, peritoneal and visceral. And in these relations, the most important part is the gastrosplenic and lenorenal ligaments. Then we'll discuss the blood supply and lymphatic supply after which we'll also talk about the functions and then the clinicals of the spleen. And once you know all of this, you have mastered the spleen. Now you can perform a splenectomy all by yourself. Let's talk about the relations of the spleen. We're going to divide it into two parts. There is going to be the peritoneal and there's going to be the visceral relation. Peritoneal means uh, what are the folds of peritoneum in relation to the spleen. And I already told you in my video that folds of peritoneum extending between organ to organ are going to be known as ligaments and these peritoneal folds are there for a reason is a pathway towards that organ so obviously it will carry vessels 
and lymph nodes and uh, nerves etc all right so talk about the peritoneal relations of the spleen what's important here is the visceral surface in the visceral surface we had this intermediate border right above it we have this hilum in the hilum of the spleen there are two important peritoneal folds or the ligaments one is known as the gastrosplenic ligament we've talked about it when the spleen was developing in the dorsal mesogastrium and then we have the lenorenal ligament now these two ligaments are both in relation to the organs nearest to spleen so here comes the stomach and posteriorly comes the kidney therefore one is for the gastrosplenic connection and one is for the lenorenal connection the gastrosplenic ligament is basically attached to the hilum of the spleen and the greater curvature of the stomach lenorenal attached again to the hilum of the spleen and the anterior surface of the kidney the gastrosplenic ligament contains the short gastric vessels do you remember that the splenic artery went inside gave the branches short gastric vessels to supply this fundus of the stomach so these travel within the gastrosplenic ligament and go to the fundus of the stomach and other contents it contains are the lymphatics and nerves the lenorenal ligament has more interesting contents one of them is the splenic artery and splenic vein so the splenic vessels are actually contained in the lenorenal ligament so you can see right here this is the splenic artery traveling in the lenorenal ligament and what else can you see the tail of the pancreas is also going to be a content of the lenorenal ligament and right behind there will be the kidney all right also contains lymph nodes what lymph nodes can they be obviously the pancreatico splenic lymph nodes all right so this is the lenorenal ligament contents and then there is another ligament called the phrenico colic ligament that is not exactly attached to the spleen but it is on the anterior side of the spleen because it is going to connect your diaphragm to the colon the colon lies about over here all right and diaphragm obviously comes from the above now let's talk about the relations of the uh, spleen with the viscera between the superior intermediate border this right here is the gastric impression for the fundus of the stomach if you see posteriorly there is this between the inferior border and the intermediate border is the kidney impression for the left kidney all right so this is renal impression the, what the, lies over here is the transverse colon especially the splenic flexure of the colon so what is a flexure any turn uh, or an angle that is being created in a tube can be called a flexure so over or here angle is being created close to the spleen so it is named as splenic flexure and this splenic flexure is going to be uh, causing a colic impression right at the anterior end close to it colic impression another impression at the hilum of the spleen is of the tail of the pancreas or the pancreatic impression apart from that the diaphragm is related to the diaphragmatic surface here it is uh, the diaphragm is separating the spleen from the obviously the contents of your thorax like the lungs and pleura the arterial and venous supply of the spleen is the splenic artery and splenic vein quite simple and expected and the pancreatic splenic no nodes are going to drain its lymph so the functions of the spleen are sim quite simple during intrauterine life this was the organ which actually synthesized blood However, after intrauterine life, it synthesizes lymphocytes. Spleen is very important for destroying RBCs. Any defective RBCs are destroyed in the spleen because it has the ability to do phagocytosis. Also, it can store the red blood cells. All right. These are a couple of functions of the spleen. Now, now let's talk about the clinicals. First important clinical is the palpation of spleen, which I've already talked about. That you cannot normally palpate it unless it's twice its normal size, and if it is enlarged, it is known as splenomegaly. Now, what are the causes of splenomegaly? Anything that causes backflow of blood in the portal vein which is being formed by the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein just behind the neck of the pancreas so any a disease of the liver such as cirrhosis can cause backflow in the portal vein and then obviously in backflow in the spleen and cause splenomegaly so there is one liver disease another cause of splenomegaly could be malaria another cause could be cancer like a cancer in which there is abnormal production of you know blood such as leukemias when there is massive destruction of rbcs so this massive destruction usually occurs in blood disorders for instance your rbcs are defective like sickle cell anemia or thalassemia they're so defective that your spleen is breaking them down so much there's so much accumulation of those rbcs that it undergoes enlargement so how will you palpate the spleen the spleen is always uh, palpated in the right iliac fossa first and why that is because spleen usually enlarges towards the right iliac fossa all right so you always palpate the spleen towards from the right iliac fossa going towards the left hypochondrium whenever there's pain in spleen if there's any um, hemorrhage in the spleen or anything that is a disease of the spleen the pain will you obviously be aware they in the left hypochondrium firstly and it will also be referred to the left shoulder this is known as the care sign this is due to the referred pain all right especially in splenic infarction the pain will go towards the left shoulder interesting you can also survive without a spleen so usually when the spleen is causing too much problem like splenomegaly is occurring or if the spleen is destroying too many rbcs for many reasons you can actually remove the spleen 
and it is a very survivable situation you can actually live without a spleen it's known as a splenectomy the surgeons have to be very careful as to not damage the tail of pancreas or any of these structures lying here so they have to carefully dissect the gastrosplenic lenorenal ligaments only then they can take the spleen out so guys that was all you need to know about the spleen i really hope i made it easy for you and if you've reached the end of the video, congratulations guys. Now you are one step ahead in the game of anatomy. In no time, I'm going to be the one that's going to ask you to teach me about the spleen. So guys, do not forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.